Hello and welcome to another episode of whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, David. Uh, We're going to be discussing this cool horse physics uh, movement system. Essentially what we'll be building is this. Now this system kind of works with uh, the idea of the thing, the horse moves and we have a, a thing that plays a different crossfade based on the speed that the horse is moving. So when it's moving slowly, we play one sort of sample. When it's moving fast, we play the other one and we'll be doing it entirely in C++ with a tiny bit of blueprint. So first up, we're going to make a new C++ component, which is going to be an actor component. Um, if you followed my last video here, uh, we'll be able to check that out. So making a new component called audio movement detection, uh, we'll be able to create that. Now it might take you a little bit of time to create the class first up, but once it's done, it'll look like this. Now I'm doing this on my Mac at the moment, but it doesn't really matter. You should have two files. There should be a header file, a .h file and a source file, a .cpp. Now, a lot of this uh, CPP file will be stuff that already comes from the uh, the Unreal side, and then this is what we will be writing. So inside this, we have three main, or four main parts. We have a speed detection, a smoothing section to make it a bit smoother, and then a user variable section uh, where the user can kind of update that. So I suppose three main parts, not four. Now, these uh, properties are important but we have two main functions, which is a begin play for the first time it happens. We have a constructor um, to initialize it and set default values to get things kind of ready, which is of a type audio movement detection with the U uh, sort of prefix right at the front. And then we have uh, these components. Now, first up, we have this uh, vector, which is going to be sort of X, Y, Z coordinates of the last position that we're going to be able to use to calculate where we were before. And then we have a current raw speed, which is just going to be the displacement between frames. Now, that'll be kind of a little bit ugly um, and, and might be really particular. So we're going to implement a smoothing component. Uh, you could kind of stop here, but the smoothing component would be cool. Uh, we have essentially some smoothing levels and an array, which will keep the history of smooth components. Um, if you're not familiar with arrays, a really quick breakdown is instead of one uh, variable per, per number, we're gonna have one variable for many numbers um, and they're sort of packed inside these square brackets um, and then addressed uh, kind of like houses in a street as opposed to uh, buildings on a city block. Like I guess said the same kind of thing, but uh, they're a little bit different. Uh, this way you can address it with just sort of speed history, which is the name of the variable, and then two, which is the address with the third uh, element of that. And then we have a speed history length, which is going to be the number of elements in that array, just in terms of uh, culling and smoothing. Finally, we have the user variables side, which is going to be properties that are exposed to the user to be able to see them uh, in the inspector. So things like they'll want to probably see the smoothing speed and they'll probably want to see the max speed. Now the max speed uh, for this, the, the maximum speed that the object can move. And the point of it is to take numbers like zero to 500 and change it to zero to one, you know, uh, 3,500 to 75,000 and change it to zero to one and just kind of normalize all those values uh, and get it, get it really balanced. Normalized values are really easy to work with. Now, the source file, which is the CPP, swapping over to that, is where we implement all these functions. Uh, first up, we start with the, what's called a constructor, uh, which is kind of the, the making of this class, the making of this thing and initializing all the variables, setting them all to default values um, so that we can get started. This stops undefined behaviors and, and you know the horse immediately being really loud if it's not supposed to be. So first up, we set the tick component to true. So to say that it can tick, uh, you'll see this in every Unreal class as it is. And then we set the current raw speed to zero, the smooth speed to zero, the sum average to zero, the history length to 10, just to 10 elements in that array and a max speed of a thousand, which the user will be able to change. That, uh, that sort of just reflected in the header of all of these elements that we've already declared. So we sort of, we tell the, the computer that we're going to use them and then we tell them how they work in a different file to keep it nice and neat. 
Inside the begin play, we have this super concept, which is like the parent object, which in this instance is an actor component. And we're kind of calling the begin play in the super, which is the, the actor component. So we're just saying, hey, give me the begin start and do, do whatever it is that you do in begin start for, for being an actor component. This little, uh, this little inheritance is really common for every object in, in a game. It kind of comes from something, um, unless it's a, a really pure struct. So next up, we look at each of these uh, variables and we'll want to start implementing them. So we have a last frame position, which in, in which case we get owner, which is of the actor again, this actor component. And we're going to get the actor location, which is going to return an F vector, which uh, does line up with our last frame position. And it's just going to say, get, get us the position of where we were when we booted the thing up. So if we instantiated this at runtime, it would still work. Next up, we're going to make sure the thing does tick um, and it ticks along and that we're fine there. And we're going to set the current position to the same way that we did the last frame position. Um, and we'll compare this a little bit later. Now the current raw speed, uh, which again is just implementing this current raw speed from the header. We're going to get the distance between the current position and the last position divided by the delta time, the time it took to uh, the time that's passed between the last frame and this frame. So you'll see the very, very common uh, get owner actor location. Um, and yeah, we're essentially dividing it there. And you could kind of stop there and just update the last frame position with the current position and be done. Um, I'm going to add some smoothing just so it isn't uh, raw values as well. All of this from here on out is smoothing. Besides that last frame position, you could pretty much stop there. Now, the way this, uh, the smoothing is very rudimentary. Uh, I wanted to just do something pretty quickly. We're basically going to add them all up and divide them by how many we have, uh, the same way that you get the average in the mean, the mean average, uh, if you are thinking about doing that in length. So we're gonna go through the speed history, again, iterating through that array um, and looking at each of the addresses and kind of populating later ones, adding, adding new entries as we were. So this add function will populate the uh, entries and, and sort of keep punching them out a little bit later on. Now, if we ever start to pass the number that we have in the length, then we're going to kind of pop off the last element and put it in the first one and kind of keep going that way uh, so that we will take a number series like so. And then we'll get the speed sum for average, which will be taking that first one, pop it out use the add to sort of, you know, punch in the first, the first number um, that we're looking to add, which would be eight in this instance and put it down the end. And then we'll get rid of the first element. Um, so I think uh, here we would, it in, well, actually, instead of putting zero here, we'd probably just get rid of this element altogether. So it would start at one and then the next time it would start at two and we'd kind of cycle around like that. Uh, and that way we could put in any number here. Um, it doesn't have to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it would be literally any number. And we're just popping and cycling um, to keep the last numbers so that we can keep dividing uh, basically by the last 10 frames to sort of smooth it out. Um, all the last 10 times we measured, it's not necessarily by frames, although in this instance, it is by frames. Uh, this is a yeah really rudimentary smoothing, but I think it I think it sounds a little bit nicer than having uh, flat values. So we take the average, uh, which will be the speed history um, of the last element that we got rid of. And we take the minimum length of uh, the history and or all of the numbers inside it. So we take the smallest number um, of those and divide it or divide the average by the smallest number. And again, you can pause at any point um, and fill out this code and it will compile and, and work for you as well. And then we'll get this smooth speed value, which we'll be able to use to clamp between whatever number we received and the max speed. Um, this is to take any number and match it up against a max speed. So ma max it up so that we get zero to one, working with normalized values. You can multiply them by a hundred if you were gonna send this to middleware a little bit later on. Um, and it required that as well which would, uh, yeah, it will give you, it will give you a value in speed, um, whatever, whatever that value is, whether you're, at, you know, zero to 100 already, or 
you know, 30 to 100 or 1,000 to 10,000 billion, whatever. Um, they don't have to be round numbers. They can be, you know, 3.6 to 4.1. Um, it's totally fine. So you can see here, uh, you know, 3,600 divided by 5,800. Like that's the number I'm looking for here um, for that 0 0.6 in terms of how far into that range that, that thing is. And then we update the position. And this is essentially the whole script here. Um, I could do this in Blueprint, but I wanted to show you it in C++. But we are going to do a really quick jump into Blueprint to set up the Metasound. In Blueprint, uh, on the event tick, I'm going to use that new component uh, that we've added on, which is that audio movement component. I'm going to pull off the audio movement component to get the current speed um, that we're looking for. And the smooth speed is the one I'm going to look for here. The moment I'm printing it out just so we can see it, but otherwise I'm going to use a float parameter um, in Metasounds and set up our Metasound, which is super basic. It just has an input with two wave players uh, that'll be set to loop. One's playing low intensity, one's playing high intensity. And then I have an input named speed, the same as what the float parameter is named in the Metasound. And I use a crossfade node uh, and it it works it, and it sounds like this. Um, uh, at the moment I'm using a very nice horse system uh, that I didn't make and I got it on the asset store, which I'll put a link in the description. Um, thanks to the creator for making this asset. This is a, a good example of doing something in C++ instead of Blueprint. Um, and it should show you a couple of parameter types, working with arrays and implementing some standard library algorithms to improve uh, your workflow, to improve some of the uh, components that you're digging in. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I, I'm really thankful that I did a poll on Twitter and, and it came up that C++ Audio was the thing that people were really keen on. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, I'm gonna keep doing some kinds of these videos um, as well, but please follow me at Dweaver Audio um, on Twitter or subscribe on YouTube. It's great to see um, that this is all happening. And a really quick shout out, uh, I have two quick shout outs actually. Uh, the first one is that you should go and check out Mix Universe. Um, it's an incredible new game developed in Unreal Engine um, that's out and it's it's really amazing uh, if you're into beat making and uh, cool synth textures. And my second shout out is that we are developing a tool for uh, linking Pro Tools and Reaper together, linking Pro Tools with the rest of your computer and developing the scripting language that Avid, uh, I guess, never never had the confidence to do. Um, we have a Discord link. Um, I'll put the Discord link in the subscription and you should come and uh, check out the beta. It helps connect up uh, some uh, Pro Tools commands with Reaper with things like Spot to Reaper and we're working on connections the other way. We would love your feedback and for you to develop some scripts that would be able to be used in the uh, in the application. So uh, yeah, definitely come swing by and uh, check out the Sweet Justice Discord uh, where you'll see the work, which I'll put the links in the description and uh, I'll see you next time.